H2K Infosys provides world-class online IT training, staffing and software testing solutions to customers worldwide. H2K Infosys supports 100% job-oriented training, hands-on project work, cloud test lab, resume preparation and review, mock interviews, robust syllabus, one-time pay, lifetime access to live classes and videos. H2K Infosys has won the trust of thousands of students worldwide. For free demo class, visit h2kinfosys.com. So basically, Salesforce admin, we have uh, these are the tabs that we have. So these are the objects that we have in Salesforce. And uh, whenever we start, first we start from setup, from setup of uh, configuration. So we have a gear icon. So this gear icon is called the setup gear icon. Okay. So if we click on it, we get some options like this is setup option, service setup, developer console and edit object. We'll be looking each one of them separately. So, okay, I'm pinning this tab so that Okay, so first we will start with the setup. So once we have clicked on setup, it lands to a setup home page where as you can see it is written setup and home. Okay, so we get a quick find box over here. <clears throat> From here, we can write, uh, we can navigate to any page from this page. Like uh, we have a, a, a multiple environment that is there in Salesforce. So we can move to different, different tools that are there. Let's say if I want to navigate to users. So we can just write it over here and it will get, give us some options and we can click on this uh, user and it will take us to the user page so basically what we are doing is uh, we are prompting us to a page where we can create or we can work on the users now what are users in salesforce see basically salesforce is a crm crm means customer relationship management so when we are talking about customer relationship management so what does that uh, actually mean crm customer relationship management actually means that whenever we are talking about customers relationship customer relationship how we can build a strong relationship with the customer let's say i have a uh, showroom i have a honda showroom okay so if i am having a honda showroom so i'll i need to have a place where i can manage my customers where i can keep the data where i can keep the records of the customers and i can also communicate with the customers through through a through an environment previously uh, it, before salesforce there were also uh, crms available in the market from google microsoft amazon and there are other as well but what makes salesforce different salesforce is first of all very user friendly easy to learn and easy to navigate now let's say as i have told that uh, i have let's say i have a honda showroom so whenever any customer who comes into my showroom or uh, buys any product uh, let's say i uh, i sell both two wheeler and four wheeler vehicle so whenever i am selling anything so every data of the customer whether it be my price whether it be the customer's name phone number 
address email id or any information from the customer i should have a place where i can keep a track uh, for future reference so these all data that we put it over here are stored in different objects so uh, what are objects uh, if you all are familiar with uh, the programming languages if you would have worked on any of the programming languages then you might have heard about database so database is what actually database is a form of table and their rows and columns so you can consider that uh, see basically uh, when crm was introduced so basically everything was done in the form of excel sheets so in excel sheets we have like uh, there is one excel sheet and we have different rows and columns over there so before uh, previously what it was done that uh, people used to enter the data manually and people used to enter the data manually in the excel sheets in different uh, rows and the columns were having their like address phone number their other informations were there but that was an old convention of uh, entering the data now when crm was introduced we have like different objects are there these are opportunities objects lead object task object files notes accounts object so these are the objects that uh, so you can consider these objects as the tables and uh, these are the records that we have like uh, these are the test records that i have created and this is one of the live record also so basically uh, if i open any uh, record let's say if i am opening this record so what will it have in salesforce so it we will have a related related means the related object records we'll be looking on that in uh, for the sessions so when we click on this detail tab so detail tab actually tells us actually tells us the overall data that we have so this page is actually called the record detail page record detail page of account object why account object because we have clicked on this accounts tab and have moved from the account object to the to this particular record okay so here we have see my name is coming account owner okay so basically every record in salesforce has an account owner who is the user so basically uh, the user we are talking about is is a person who is having control of on a particular org let's say if uh, uh, so we have different kinds of users into salesforce and each user is having a different uh, sort of profile let's say uh, in a company uh, or in a in a house also let's take uh, you an example that in a house there are different family members so each and every family member is having a name and let's say if somebody is a student somebody is working as a software developer somebody is working as a software tester somebody is working as a doctor so different users have different profiles uh, means uh, their work level so similarly in salesforce also we have like uh, uh, the we can create different users so these are the names of those particular users and uh, these are the user names so basically whatever user that we create in salesforce is able to log in into this particular org this is an org in salesforce this is this complete environment is called an org in salesforce means an organization in salesforce so basically whenever we are required to 
uh, have a sales force org so first of all we need to uh, contact sales force and have a particular particular license so we have like enterprise edition license professional edition license classic edition license and this uh, uh, this is a developer edition license this is a free one this is a free personal uh, developer edition org that i have opened in front of you so we will be also creating separate uh, orgs for you uh, you also so that you can work on it so basically sales pros salesforce provides an organization environment and org so that people can work now in this org we will create different users who are who will be working on this particular org and each and every user should be able to log in into this org and uh, perform their tasks individually so these users when we are creating any user so every user let's say i'm opening my user so every user has a profile and a role linked to it so if i have opened this uh, user so what am i getting uh, the functionalities on this page that it is storing my name and alias is taken it is storing my email address and it is storing the user license so user license is salesforce profile is system administrator now if i click on edit i can do the edit functionality on this page now see basically user whenever we are creating any new user that is we are introducing a new family in this uh, new family member in the family you can uh, think of that way so new user so these are the roles that we can assign to a particular user so what kind of role is he or she going to uh, do okay now comes profile so whenever we are creating any new user so we can uh, uh, like uh, assign a given profile to that uh, particular user let's say whenever uh, we are creating any new user so that means we are introducing a new family member so a profile can be assigned to that particular user what does that mean actually a profile in salesforce is having a given uh, level of access let's say if we are working in a company so we have different peoples like hr is there software developer is there software tester is there admin people are there network admin are there so each and every people are having different level of access in the company let's say uh, a development team is having an access to a particular uh, floor on a company while a system admin or a network admin is having more access in a company so those are the level of access we are talking about and whenever we are uh, assigning a particular user with a particular profile so it we are in a way defining the level of accessibility that particular user will be having okay so this is all about user so here we can also define in the profile that what all permissions that are given in on the basis of field level security and object level security now we'll be looking at field and objects after this so let's see if i have clicked on profiles so it has taken to a, a lot of options over here so basically standard object layout so it has given us the accessibility to this particular user the accessibility of page layout so inside page layout there are different objects that are there in this particular org so one level of accessibility is on the page layout we'll be looking each and everything in detail 
so i'm just giving you an overview so it gives an option of custom object field level security so it so every user is having a lot of options into it now uh, since we have uh, uh, taken the name of uh, objects so as we have seen that uh, every object in salesforce acts as a database table for storing the records so every objects these are the tabs of the objects that are created so in salesforce salesforce provides by default some standard objects and we can also create some custom objects as per the business requirements so like opportunities is a standard object leads is a standard object accounts tasks contacts campaign these dashboard these are the standard objects now the as per the business uh, uh, scenario whenever any new uh, so i was talking about my honda showroom so let's say i have a honda showroom and uh, i ran a campaign in which uh, i ran a seminar for one day in which uh, 500 people attended that seminar so let's say out of 500 people 200 people or 300 people were somehow interested in knowing more about uh, my product so what will happen that uh, our sales team and marketing team will uh, will allow them to fill a form so all the information that the customers fill their form so uh, so our sales team and marketing team will be will be putting them in the lead object now depending on the uh, type of customer we can create different sort of list views we'll be also looking on what are list views later on but uh, uh, so those informations were stored in salesforce in the lead object so lead object is what lead is an object it is acting as a database table so every uh, table will be having so you can consider all these objects as database table and what does every database table whether it be uh, any database like oracle mysql whatever database we are talking about so every database table uh, has the option to store the records in the form of rows and tables so so yeah we were talking about objects so in salesforce we have like standard objects that are standard objects or what uh, what type of objects or what type of database table those are the objects that are already there whenever an org is created so whenever an org is created whenever we have like uh, purchased or uh, we have uh, been given uh, an organization environment so this is an organization environment so whenever we are logged into a particular salesforce org so we get some standard objects from salesforce those are called standard objects which are already there which are already given from salesforce by default it will be on each and every org uh, no matter uh, whichever license we are, are taking whether it be an enterprise edition uh, professional edition or developer edition or or classic edition so standard objects are already there so let's say this account is also an st uh, standard object so once the object uh, once we have got the object we can create uh, new records like we can fill in new records by clicking on this new button so uh, maybe uh, they are as per the business requirement we are also required to create some new objects okay uh, that uh, new object with some other name so uh, in a way we are like creating a custom one whatever we are creating from our side that is not already there so these they are called the custom objects 
custom objects are the objects that we created from our side okay so basically how custom objects are created so we can click on this care icon again setup over here you can see there is one object manager tab that is visible over here so we can click on object manager now this object manager whenever we are uh, clicking on this object manager tab so it shows the list of all the objects that are there in this particular organization in this particular org it will display all the objects that are there so so it will show both the standard objects and custom objects okay no matter uh, if it is a standard object or a custom object and how to differentiate which object is a custom object and which object is a standard object so every object will have a label label means the name and an api name api name means application programming interface name is there for each and every object whether it be a standard object or a custom object so let's say account and every standard object uh, whatever will be the label will be the api name in most of the cases but how to differentiate if it is uh, uh, let's say if we are given any object so uh, how will we differentiate if the object that we are working on is a standard object or a custom object if it is a standard object then the api name will be uh, most most likely the object label name means account so api name is also account now this was about the standard object if it is a standard object so the most in most of the cases the account uh, label means the ob standard object label that is same as the api name now when we are talking about custom object so every custom object the api name will have a suffix of underscore underscore c underscore underscore c means that this is a custom build object okay same it will be in case of fields also we'll be looking on fields after this so this was about objects so standard objects are those objects that are already there in salesforce that are provided from salesforce custom objects are those objects which are created uh, as a custom as per from our side as per the business requirements so every api name of a custom object will have a underscore underscore c as the suffix okay so as you can see employee data is the label and api name is employee underscore employee underscore data underscore underscore c so api name from api name we can uh, bifurcate or we can differentiate whether it is a standard object or a custom object okay so basically uh, this was about the standard objects and custom object now standard objects are already there in salesforce by default now whenever we are required to you know create the custom objects so where from where we can create a custom object let's say uh, we have a business requirement in which we are required to create some custom objects so we can create the custom objects from this page only as you can see uh, there is one quick find box let's say if i am required to find any i don't want to scroll up and down i I should get a place where I can easily write something and I, I should get that particular object. So in that, uh, in this quick find box, I can write, let's say I want to find for opportunities objects. So I'll write opportunity and it will filter out all the 
objects that are related to what I have typed. So here I can find that the opportunities object is there. Similarly, I can also find for other object as well. Let's say I want to find contact. So here all the objects that are related to what I have typed here are displaying filtered out. Okay. So it will filter out both the standard objects and the custom objects. Okay. So as I have said, as I said that uh, this object manager tab will display all the objects that are present in this particular or no matter they are a standard object or a custom object. Now standard objects are already there in Salesforce. What about the custom objects? Custom objects are those we, which we can create. Now how to create the custom object? Yes. So here we can click on create and it will give us custom object custom object from spreadsheet spreadsheet means if we are looking to have import any data from a spreadsheet we can also import that we will be looking that in further classes now let's see how to create a custom object so we clicked on this create pick list and we will click on this custom objects so what it will do it will take us to a page where we can create new custom object now whenever we are creating a new custom object so it will have some mandatory fields if you can see there are these are the fields label plural label object name so you can see a red strip that is there that means that these fields are the mandatory fields we need to fill something into this field okay now these all options that are there for uh, creating the objects are something that that are defined at the profile level if you remember when we were creating the users so in that users option we were creating new users and we were assigning profiles and roles so in that profiles it was having large number of functionalities over there large number of functionalities in the sense it we are we were providing different level of accessibility accessibility means uh, on the basis of field level, object level, page layout level, and other levels. So, if we give an access to a particular user profile, every user will have a user profile. If you remember, when we were on the users page, so every user was having a given profile. Let me show you to you again let's say i am writing users and when i'm going on to the users page so every user that i have created is having a profile let's say one two three four five six so i have six users in my uh, developer edition all so so these are the profiles that are there let's say system administrator standard user standard platform user analytics cloud integration user chat free user so what are these profiles actually so whenever we are creating any user so we assign a profile okay so assigning a profile means giving a given level of accessibility to that particular profile. Let's say, um, and the system administrator, who whosoever user we are making the system administrator will be having the maximum level of access. Maximum level of access means he can create anything in this uh, organization. He can allow the other user profile the accessibility whether that user profile can create edit modify any field 
object or any record means uh, we can also edit the records also when let's say uh, if i am into accounts so if i'm into accounts object so we are like having eight records over here so a, a particular user who is logged in to this particular org can also modify these records let's say i have opened this uh, particular data or record and uh, so let's say if i want to uh, add anything like annual revenue if i want to edit so let's say i want to add okay and i can click on save so how am i able to save because what in uh, because i am a user and the profile that is been given to me is having the read edit and write access and those all things are defined in the user profiles we'll be looking on each and every detail of what all uh, permissions are there in a particular user profile later on but uh, yeah we were uh, like looking on the yeah creating new custom object so as i said that uh, uh, objects in salesforce are like database tables and every database table is something that uh, uh, is used to store the uh, records in the form of fields and uh, in the form of fields and they are in the form of rows and columns like uh, uh, in any database whether it be mysql or oracle so every database is having rows and columns so similarly here also we have uh, the objects you can consider them them as uh, database tables and every object will be having fields into them so like we are like look uh, looking at the object so let's uh, uh, create a new custom object and then we'll be looking on to the fields so like we are uh, creating a new custom object so we are required to fill these three mandatory fields so uh, let's say we are giving a name called student or salesforce learner okay salesforce learner is the object name custom object name that i want to create so i gave a name as the label as salesforce learner okay now whenever we are like uh, trying to create a new custom object we are required to give a plural uh plural, plural name of whatever label we have given let's say if we were creating accounts account so the plural level will be s so just add one s after that let's say if i have uh, given a name of uh, sales as salesforce learner so i will just add one s after it that means it is a plural name and uh, whatever label that we enter over here the object name is by default taken uh, by default and whatever uh, whatever space we give in the object label name is by default appended by underscore by salesforce okay and uh, it has other options as well like uh, we can create the reports or not we'll be looking on what reports are we can uh, so allow activities activities are like whenever we are performing any activities so every object is having task and activities so we'll be also looking on that also track field history if uh, any field is created in this particular object custom object or if any field is modified so we can also track that allow in chatter groups so every since this is a crm so this is a customer relationship management so uh, we need to communicate with the customers either through call email or through chat 
so all these things every option that we are seeing it over here i'm just showing it in brief but we'll be looking each and everything in detail so yeah i have uh, checked off all the options that we can also create the reports activities field and chatter groups on this particular custom objects that we are creating now we can also deploy it to another another organization another org allow search also we can so these are optional these are not mandatory i'm just showing it to you uh, so that these options are also available in salesforce while creating the custom objects so the mandatory fields are the label name of this custom object the pl plural label and the object name now once we will click on save so it will create a new custom object now as you can see there is one more button save and new so what does this mean that if i click on save and new then it will save this particular custom object and it will also allow it will also open the same page where it will given us give us an option where we can create another custom object okay but uh, since we are required to create just one custom object so we'll be clicking on save now see in the details tab we are seeing that an object is created as with the name salesforce learner okay now how will we come to know if this object that is created will be now when we will be clicking on object manager so when we are clicking on object manager it shows all the objects that are present in this particular org so it will have both the standard objects and custom objects okay so it is showing all the objects so how will we come to know that the salesforce learner object that is there is a custom object or a standard object so if you remember i said that every stand every custom object will have an api name something like this it will have a suffix underscore underscore c so from here and as you can see it was last modified uh, but uh, on today's date and this is a custom object so this will be ticked but if we are looking on the object manager page then we will come to know this yeah this is a custom object because custom is ticked custom is checked off but if uh, we are looking at uh, some other place then this underscore underscore c after salesforce learners that we have created will tell us that this particular object is a custom object <clears throat> wait yeah so this is the details of this particular custom object we have created the api name as it is showing that salesforce underscore learner so whatever space that we give while creating the custom object is uh, appended by the underscore by default from salesforce and since this is a custom object so underscore underscore c custom is ticked and we these are the options which we have enabled while creating the custom objects that we can allow the reports and activities and track field history this was the single singular label and this was the plural label that we have given okay now this was about object so we saw custom object we saw standard object now now that the object is created so now it comes the the 
the need to now uh, if we take in uh, take an example so in view of the database so the table has been created database table has been created means the object has been created now where will we store the value we'll be storing the values in rows and columns as we talk in database but in salesforce we have fields where we'll be storing the data if you remember on this account object so all these data where so each and every uh, account number ticket symbol account side these all are called fields into salesforce so what are fields exactly they are the value container so or they contain values into them we can fill some values into them so let's say account name so this is the name of the account phone number we have so every field and uh, every field acts as the rows and columns uh, when we are talking about database any database so in a database we have like tables and rows and columns so tables are the objects and rows and columns are the fields over here so what does this field do they they store the values or they store the data they store the record so whenever we are creating any new custom object so every object some standard fields are given by salesforce by default so these are the created by field which is a lookup uh, with the user object so user is also an object and this is a lookup ki kind of relationship we'll be looking on the lookup kind of relationship uh, later on uh, actually uh, so we have created a sort of relationship with this particular object with the user object so in salesforce we can also create the relationship because as you can see over here that we have opportunities lead task files notes accounts these are all different objects that are there so every object is working independently and every object is having its own fields where the data or where the records are getting stored now we can also create a relationship between one object with another object so we'll be looking on a relationship like we have lookup relationship we have master detail relationship we have another hierarchical relationship that is created with the user so we'll be looking on those uh, in further sessions so basically whenever a new object is created so salesforce provides us with some standard fields standard fields means anything that is standard means that is already given by salesforce that is already there that is whenever we are creating anything something that is provided from salesforce side are called standard and something that we created from our side as per our business requirement are called custom whether it be custom object or whether it be custom field okay so just now we created one custom object with the name salesforce learner similarly when when we created this object salesforce has provided us with four standard fields these are created by last modified by owner and salesforce learner name okay now if we click on new so we can create new fields now it may be possible that uh, our business requirement is fulfilled uh, by the uh, is uh, fulfilled from the fields that are given by salesforce as standard but it may also be possible that uh, uh, we are required to create more fields so that we we have more data that we can store in uh, different fields so we can also create custom fields so if you remember uh, so 
in any programming language whenever we are talking about creating any variable or creating any field we need to provide a data type like it uh, the field that we are going to create or the variable that we are going to create is a text type of field or a number kind of field or a decimal kind of field so likewise salesforce also provide a list of data types that we can use while creating a particular field now what does this data type mean data type of a particular field will tell us that what will be the behavior of that particular field that we are going to create let's say if i am uh, creating a number data type field so it will be storing the numbers into that field if we are creating a percent field so whatever value will be entering into that particular field will be salesforce will be providing a percent sign after that if we are providing the data type as currency so a dollar symbol will be by default uh, added as the prefix into the number that we fill in this particular field so let's say we are creating a currency data type field and so while creating the custom object while creating the custom object first and foremost requirement that we have is selecting the data type what will be the data type of the field that we are going to create means what will be the behavior of the field we are going to create so here we can select the data type how will what will be the behavior of that field how will the field behave so that behavior or that data type is basically selected from this page okay and as you can see lookup relationship master detail relationship these are the data types we can which we can select so we'll be looking on each and every data type that is mentioned over here and there is also a short uh, description about each and every data type but maybe you would not be understanding it by going through this uh, description because but i'll be explaining each and everything each and every data type to you in further sessions so that after getting that uh, explanation you will be able to understand it okay so let's say the first and foremost thing while creating the custom field is the data type that we have selected so choose the field type so the data type we have selected will be clicking on next button so it will be prompting us to a page where we are required to so we are into step two or four so there are four steps while creating a custom field and every field will reside in a particular object so every object has different fields into them so let's say we have uh, created a salesforce learner custom objects so we are going to create and when we have created salesforce learner custom objects so salesforce has provided four fields as standard fields not but as per our business requirement we are required to create more fields so that we can uh, have more data more values into them so we are creating some custom fields so here what we can do is let's say uh, so we have taken uh, the data type as currency so let's say salesforce learner salary okay is the name field label that we have given so these all with the red strips are the mandatory fields okay so salesforce learner salary is the label that we have given we just need to click on this field label text box and it will auto populate whatever we have filled in the field label and as you can see that the space that i have uh, put it over here in the field label is by default appended by the underscore 
and we can also give the length and decimal places let's say i want to have it to 16 digits and i want to have decimal place up to two decimal places okay so this is a currency field that we are going to create and it will be of length 16 digits and we can have two decimal places okay and if we want to add some formula we can also have a formula over here formula editor or we also have a data type called formula which we'll be looking on later on so by doing this by entering the values into these fields we have completed the step two of four now on the next on the uh, next page uh, we'll we will be allowed to select the profile level visibility profile level visibility means if you remember while creating the user we were talking about profiles so whenever we are uh, creating any new user it means that every user has a profile that has been assigned to him or her so every user uh, we talk about so every user has a profile every user has a profile means every user so and every user has a profile that has been assigned to that particular user and every profile is having a given level of accessibility accessibility means whether that particular profile when the user is logged in uh, using the credentials his or her credentials into this organization so that particular user should be able to view edit modify or write anything and that will be only defined by the level of accessibility we are giving to that particular user profile let's say we have uh, there is a company there is a company in which there are let's say uh, 50 halls are there 50 floors are there or 50 rooms are there okay but a software developer or a software tester are only given the access to the doors of only those rooms only those floors in which he or she is mean to work okay let's say 50 rooms are there so a software developer need to work in let's say five rooms so he will be given the accessibility to the door of only five rooms only while an hr or admin or a network admin or a system admin will need to go in each and every room so that they will be given the those level of accessibility uh, uh, on the doors so that they can enter each and every door so what does this accessibility means that the hr admin or other people can go inside each and every door of the company means there are 50 so these level of accessibility we means this was an example uh, so basically in salesforce also whenever we are creating any new user so every user a uh, profile has been assigned so that in that uh, profile level assignment and profile level accessibility only that particular user can perform and these all things are done by the system administrator so whosoever user has been made the system administrator will be creating new users and will be assigning the different profiles to those those users so basically whenever we are creating this new custom field so on this page so basically these all things are done by system administrator only so whosoever is the system administrator creates new object new fields or uh, he can also allow other user profiles the accessibility to create new uh, object new fields okay so now we are on the third page of creating the custom field we have already created a custom object called salesforce learner so salesforce learner was the custom object and inside that we are creating new custom field so here on the third step 
we are uh, giving the accessibility these are the profile names that are visible and this field that we are going to create salesforce learner salary so which all user profiles should have the access to this particular field means which this field will be visible to which user profiles we can select it over here the administrator can select which this field will be accessible or visible to which user profiles if we if the system administrator clicks on this visible checkbox then it will be for all so depending on the business requirement the system administrator can give the level of accessibility or visibility to a particular user profile on this page there is also one uh, option of read only so read only means if i check off this box this check box for a particular user profile that means this user profile will be having the accessibility of only reading that data means he can only see that uh, see this field and the data into this field he cannot uh, modify or edit anything okay so these options can be also given to a particular user profile on this page now this was the third step of four while for creating the custom field now we'll be moving on to the fourth step on the fourth step we are assigning a page layout to this field now what are page layout page layout is the option that is there on this page okay on this object manager page so page layout is something that how do we want to show or how do we want or where do we want to show any particular field let's say this was the account object record so basically this is account record detail page that we have opened so these are so this is the record name and this is the detail of that uh, particular record so as we can see that this is one field this is another field so we have different fields over here and we have like uh, bifurcated these fields into two columns so these all things are defined in the page layout so, okay so whenever we are creating any field any custom field so we are required to assign a page layout like how do we want and where do we want to show this particular field so we can show all these things on the page layout okay we can define all these things on the page layout now we, when we will be clicking on save so it will create a new custom field and if we click on save and new then it will create a new custom field and it will also give us an option to create another custom field and if we click on previous then it will take us to the previous pages like third second or first page okay so we are going to click on save now as you can see that when we created the salesforce learner custom object so by default there were um, four fields that were four standard fields were there that was given from salesforce side and we have created one custom field as salesforce learner salary and as you can see that this is a custom field because underscore underscore c is there that means that this is a custom field and what is the data type data type is currency and in the bracket as you can see if you remember i have taken the length of this currency field as 16 digits and two up to two decimal places okay so this is how we create a new custom field into any object so it's not that we we can create the custom field in only custom object we can also create custom field in standard object as well
so this was how about we can create new custom fields now field dependencies are there field dependencies like if there is some dependency that is there we will be also looking on that set history tag tracking means we can also set history tracking like if uh, uh, i can also let's say i have created this field as currency but uh, in later part of my business requirement i am required to change the data type so i can also you know edit or delete this particular field also so i can edit and change the data type change the uh, label okay so i can also do that so i can also set the the history tracking uh, for uh, whatever the history is there uh, behind any particular field when it was created when it was modified we can also track that as well okay so these all things are related to uh, so we saw users we saw uh, objects we saw fields and this uh, we uh, talked about the user profile level accessibility whether they can see or not and we saw the page layout we'll be looking more into it later on but uh, now let's see, uh, take an example that we were also like uh, so in our session what we'll be covering on actually we'll be covering uh, from the lower in uh, beginner level higher in beginner level lower intermediate and higher intermediate okay and we'll be also looking some part of advanced also depending upon uh, how much you can because depending on the level of experience that you are having because and i'll be also providing you with the assignments uh, uh, on regular intervals so that you can have uh, a hands on so basically these so what we covered today that these are the database tables okay and each database table is uh, like these are the objects and each object each object is having fields into them whether it be a standard field or a custom field and these all things are defined in the page layout okay let me show you how page layout looks like so so we are like in object manager this is the name so as we can click on details we can find the details about this particular object okay there's some network issue okay so this this uh, talks about this says about the uh, details of this particular salesforce learner in fields and relationship we can find all the fields that are there uh, both standard and custom fields in page layout when we'll be clicking on page layout so it will show us the and yeah whenever when uh, we are creating any new custom object uh, uh, a page layout is also assigned to that particular object okay so let me show you how this page layout page looks like just a second it, it is taking a bit time yeah so this is how page layout page looks like so as you can see that uh, we have fields we have buttons we have quick actions mobile these all are the options that uh, we can create it from here like we created fields so and we can also adjust the fields 
in the page layout let's say we have five fields one two three four five let's say if i want to uh, have this salesforce learner salary on the right side so i can do that on this page so i can adjust the fields on this page layout as per my business requirement like it was on this page that i want to have some fields on right side and some fields on the left side so i can do that on this page okay so this is how <coughs> sorry this is how the page layout looks like we can uh, define the overall design or overall uh, layout of uh, a particular object whether it be a standard or custom object on this page and when we we'll, i'll be clicking on save so that will get saved okay so this was about the page layout and uh, yeah so sometime so uh, since we are talking about crm so in crm it is uh, it may be possible that uh, we are talking end to end customer relationship management so in customer relationship management we are not uh, confined or bound to just store the data of a particular customer in the form of records in in a particular uh, object we it may be also possible that we are required to create different reports okay reports in the sense like uh, uh, they there can be some sales report there can be some uh, survey report so we can also have uh, like uh, reports in salesforce that we can create so it was like uh, uh, total records and total annual revenue so we can also find the revenue that was earned by the company for a given period of time so we can also like create so we also have the option to create reports as well and uh, uh, so yeah we'll in our sessions we'll be also seeing how to create the reports and how to create dashboards as well so and uh, salesforce is uh, like uh, very powerful and it uh, also allows you to create automations now what are automations we'll be also looking on those as well so automation is something that uh, if something happened then there should be some effect on the other side means if uh, there is uh, uh, if anything that is getting changed on one of the field then there should be some effect on the other field it's like magic okay so you don't need to do it manually all the time so salesforce also provide some option to do the automation which we will be also seeing seeing it in our further sessions so basically we have different automation tools in salesforce like workflow process builder we can also write custom triggers also like here so we just need to click on setup and let's say i want to create one process builder so i'll be just writing process builders and it will be giving me the option where i can go and create a process builder okay so we'll be looking each and everything can i ask a question please yes sure uh, so just checking so uh, how uh, long is the class going to be like how many weeks time is it just uh, for today only or it's going to continue for how long no actually uh, it will be like uh, one hour session but uh, sometime uh, when i start teaching and this is my first class so basically i am not aware i didn't got the chance to uh, have a word with all of you so on what uh, level of uh, salesforce uh, classes are you looking to have because i am see basically having more than 5 years of experience so basically are you all like freshers and looking to get certified in near future
Yes, I'm new yeah. to Salesforce. This is RK. Yeah, okay. Yeah, okay. Oh, I can also see some chat is also there. Can one user edit or go in another user profile? One user can edit, but provided uh, uh, basically this uh, the user should be a system administrator. So he has the uh, option to edit or go in. So basically one user can go in other, another user profile, but uh, giving the level of accessibility is basically uh, uh, having the, uh, is something that the administrator is having. Who creates new user, only the admin or any user in the org. So basically a new user is created only from the admin side, who is the, uh, uh, so who who has been made uh, the whichever user has been made the admin uh, it creates new user how much coding knowledge is required to learn salesforce and which language is used in salesforce so basically uh, it's not about uh, uh, only you need coding knowledge see basically salesforce why it is so powerful and why it is so uh, if you remember on the first uh, sentence i said that it is very user friendly so it's not that you need coding knowledge, but yes, if you want to have, uh, 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 if you want to go into development, yes, Apex is the programming language that is used, but uh, Salesforce comes up with two things. One is admin side and one is the development side, but uh, no one can be a Salesforce developer until and unless uh, he is clear or he, uh, he knows the admin side of Salesforce. So every developer, whether it be he is working or he or she is working as a system salesforce administrator or salesforce developer both of them need to have a clear and better understanding at least till an intermediate level of uh, salesforce admin side so, so, so class, uh, we are targeting for as a qa or it will be as a development also means for this particular course uh, so you can tell me uh, that if you want uh, for this particular course with uh, covering the admin side oh, and oh. Uh, if if you want we can also like uh, I'm uh, having five years of experience more than five years of experience and I'm a certified developer. So oh. I, I would be uh, not having any issue, but uh, this session uh, for which I am hired for is for uh, building a base on admin side. Oh, okay cool cool that will be great and uh, basically it will be like uh, of uh, uh, 14 to 15 days so five or uh, five days in a week we'll be having like uh, one out of session on a daily basis so uh, you can say that it will be covering three weeks and i'll be also providing you with hands-on uh, experience so so that you can you all can um, uh, try it on your side also as well and uh, I'll be need I'm providing you with the assignments like uh, whatever I'll be teaching you I'll be giving you sort of homework that you can complete and if you have any doubt or any clear clarification that you will be needing so you can uh, refer me uh, thank you sir for the, what is the duration of the course will you be providing notes will the course prepare us for admin exam yeah definitely so as i was told that uh, uh, just now uh, uh, 15 to 20 days before uh, i covered one of the session uh, she is also living in uh, us only texas so she was a complete fresher and uh, i'll be covering the uh, admin side whatever uh, are asked in the admin certification exam and uh, she cleared the uh, admin certification uh, like uh, one week or 10 days before she cleared it we don't have the salesforce software it's uh, you don't need to have salesforce software it means the salesforce software is something that uh, whenever you are working on java or php or any other programming language so you need to install the uh, uh, software for that but salesforce is a cloud based company so cloud means uh, all you need to have uh, this organization environment and a good internet connective connection that is it so this class is for qa testing point of view 
no this is not just for qa uh, qa testing point means quality analyst uh, no this is uh, for administration and a little bit of development are you going to help us in order to install the software in our system no you don't need any software installation on your system all you need, need to have a salesforce org i missed the initial part of the demo do you have some other demo planned or please let me know uh, so just tell armit can you uh, let me know if you uh, if you join the session when we covered the users or uh, you you join the session when we were talking about objects okay during objects yeah so yeah definitely we'll be looking on the users again and uh, i believe uh, since you were during the objects so you might have uh, understood the standard and custom objects we'll be uh, taking these names uh, again and again and we'll be, see basically i was just this class was just for giving uh, a brief overview but uh, i showed you how we can create the object in salesforce and how we can create custom fields so th this was not the end we'll be creating many more objects and uh, i'll be also providing you with the assignments where you are required to create a custom object on your own and custom fields as well and uh, can you please have exact timing for last going forward start and end timing please yeah sure so basically i believe you are uh, all you are in the central time right est est okay i'm so, i'm in uh, i'm in eastern time yeah okay so basically uh, will it be good to have around 9 uh, o'clock or 8 o'clock okay pravina lives in west coast 9 okay 8 pm <laughs> can <laughs> so 8 9 between 8 to 9 so which one shall we uh, keep uh, i are you all like working somewhere or uh, you all are like have uh, are preparing to work okay as is working already okay you already we already have another class at 8 preparing to work okay so like you are already have another class at 8 so it will be better uh, so that vrinda also don't have any uh, cumbersomeness so uh, it will be better can we keep at 9 okay so 9 pm est right okay so today it would be uh, friday over there so if uh, if you all allow so we can start uh, from monday your time uh, 9 pm is that fine with all of you so basically uh, what i'll be doing is what i usually used to do is uh, uh, about the charges you can discuss with s2k uh, it will end at 10 pm then uh, vrinda i'm uh, yeah it should end but uh, uh, i believe you should whenever you are learning you should have some 10 to 15 minutes because uh, whenever i i'm teaching i don't uh, look at the watches so i should be means my motto is that i am spending that much amount of energy and that much amount of power and that much amount of brain so that you people can understand it well and to have a clear knowledge so uh, yeah it will be of one hour only but uh, sometime if it it, it exceeds uh, uh, by 10 minutes or 15 minutes then please excuse me <laughs> and then i'm sorry means uh, you can just uh, uh, if if you will be getting late you can let me know we can end it and we can continue it on next uh, day 
but uh, if you are fine then uh, we can have like so i i have a planned uh, kind of thing planned topic that i want to cover in a day so that you all can have a clear picture so yeah it will be of one hour only but sometimes it may exceed like for 10 minutes or 15 minutes and if you find uh, that you are getting late you can let me know we can also end it okay Okay, any more questions? Any more questions, any more doubts, any more uh, thing that uh, that was whatever you are going to be teaching in class, we will be ready for certification examination. Yeah, basically, uh, I'll be covering only only those topics uh, that are usually asked in the certification examination. Okay. So, yeah. And uh, let's say uh, uh, we are going to cover it in three weeks. So basically, uh, from Monday to Friday your time so on Saturday and Sunday you won't be sitting idle so I'd be uh, you will be going through the assignment that I'll be providing you no we are good I don't have programming knowledge yeah as you don't need to have programming language see basically when I started my career I was not having programming language as well but I am uh, like uh, a very good programmer right now and uh, uh, I have worked on more than 25 projects as of now on Salesforce itself. I have also worked on Java and PHP as well. Yeah, but uh, but uh, to become a Salesforce programmer or Salesforce developer also you should have the admin knowledge which we are going to cover. So I can also learn admin part. Uh, as basically we are, uh, you are going to learn admin only in this uh, session and uh, uh because every salesforce developer needs to uh, have the knowledge of admin only then only he can be become a salesforce developer okay guys yeah thank you so much so i believe uh, whatever we have covered was uh, clear to all of you but this is this was just the uh, beginning this was just a brief whatever I have taught you today in the demo class so basically these things will be covering again will be covering new things also uh, will be also looking on the automation or the magic I was talking about will be also looking on the reports as well will be also means Salesforce is huge it's like an ocean okay even a 10 year Salesforce developer can't say that he knows complete Salesforce okay but uh, i'll be like uh, making you uh, ready for the uh, certification examination and uh, uh, after that i'll be also making you ready so that you can uh, apply for the salesforce interviews as well so i'll be covering till that point uh, part till a salesforce administrator having one year experience would be having i'll be covering till that point okay guys